I just hit the record button. Hope that's okay with everyone. Um, <laughs> we missed the we missed the beautiful uh, grounding, but add that in somehow after. Um, yeah, so really excited for this space. We held this yesterday, and it led to some really beautiful <clears throat> creations. Um, just as a little bit of context, my name is Eileen, and I like to dabble in many different sandboxes um, and I'm here holding this space uh, for many reasons. I think it's a really powerful thing. Um, it has been for me to like look at a systems level but also get to the granular detail um, and just in exploring how we can like make maps of different things, uh, see what it can reveal to us and like be a tool for learning. And so, yeah, Narayan and I have been uh, playing around with this kind of since last conference. We met a year ago um, at Reimagining and realized that we both really like to hop between these different like levels of seeing the world and uh, different communities that we're a part of have like really interesting intersections. So we wanted to come up with a creative way to share that with folks today um, in the space. And then, yeah, and really emphasize the co-creation. I think that's a big part of uh, what we hope happens <clears throat> both right now in the next hour and at reimagining at this conference in general. Um, yeah, so that's a little bit of the of the background backstory while we're here. Ryan, do you want to add anything? I'd actually love to add nothing. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, yeah, that will give us more time for dabbling and debriefing at the end, which uh, I think is where the processing after the activity can actually be a lot of the, the learning. So the question that we wanted to hold today for exploration is something like, what in your dreams, what does learning look like? Like when you imagine spaces of true learning, uh, what comes to life for you? And you'll be working in a small group. And we want to use this invitation to visually um, explore that um, through like a diagram that's a wildly simplified version of what we all imagine. Um, but that allows some like real beautiful nuance to, to come forward. And so, yeah, that's what we're going to be doing. We're using this tool called Miro. And I think the best thing to do next is we'll just do a little uh, example for y'all, kind of show you what we're up to. Narayan, do you want to share? Well, I'm not a co-host because I arrived late, so. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, let's if you want to make me a co-host or, or share your screen as well. Make everyone able to share their screen. So let's do that. Okay. In theory, you all now can share your screen. Anyone want to let me know? If that's okay. So I'll share, I'll share a screen. And I guess we can just do a really quick uh, demonstration and maybe share some of the other creations that people have made. Um, mm -hmm. And it, it feels kind of funny to like, go to a bunch of kids and be like, let me show you how to play in a sandbox. Let me show you how to build a sandcastle. But that's what we're doing apparently. <laughs> so we're in a Miro board and don't worry if you don't know how to use this tool. Um, we're gonna, we're, we'll figure something out. Uh, it hasn't been a problem. So um, yeah, so just feel relaxed about use of this tool. Um, we've got a tool here. We've got some toys that you can play with in the sandbox and we're just gonna make just gonna make some stuff up. Um, I guess we'll need a frame. Like what's, what kind of house are we building? What kind of sandcastle, Eileen? Hmm. Today I'm imagining like an outdoor learning school. Outdoor learning school, I love it. Okay, cool. <laughs> I'm just gonna draw a box. And I'll <laughs> double click on it and say outdoor. Mm hmm. Yeah, nature's important. I like that somehow the outdoors in the box, and then I don't know, it's beyond it. But <clears throat> oh right, outdoors. <laughs> <laughs> What's outside of the outdoors? 
indoors? Well, I don't know. Maybe we'll discover that as we go. I'll put dotted lines around that side. Okay. Cool. <laughs> Feels a little more open to me. Thank you. Um, cool. Okay. Yeah. What then? When I picture learning um, today, I picture like actually a lot of adults, but they like have their like learning mindset with them. <clears throat> and there's also kids. Yeah, actually there's, I'm picturing people with, from lots of different ages. Um, no teenagers though, we don't like them. <laughs> <laughs> there's some, yeah, can I think kids can be, maybe we just label them as kid, kid adults, adult kids. Kidults. Kidults. Okay, so we've got adults and kids in this outdoor space. How are they learning? Hmm. Good question. They are, I feel like they have backpacks and maybe they all start with like some type of discussion and everyone lands on a question. And mm, then- Okay, so they have, so they're equipped. Mm -hmm. So they've got the equipment to learn. And yeah. they've got the mindset to learn. I, I heard you mention that as well. Yeah. Um, and actually, yeah, maybe there's like a quest. Like they are all being invited to co-create some type of solution for... Hmm, there's something about like food. Yeah, like you need a challenge. You need a, a focus for your learning, I think. Mm hmm yeah, maybe they're setting up um, structures and like maybe they're designing, maybe this is just like the first group and they're designing um, like a learning experience for other people. So they're just, this, this group is like setting it up. Okay. And I think this would be a good place to pause. <laughs> so we would sort of continue on this way, just imagining what this learning experience might look like. Um, yeah, we can just quickly share a couple other examples. This was the one that we did yesterday. We just play with just just we're just making some ideas of what a system map could look like. And this can be totally up to you. Some of the ones that people made yesterday was just like really creative word clouds. This one used more visual imagery. Um, this one was a lot more systematic and understanding of different stakeholders and stuff. But this is a sandcastle. It's whatever you want to build. Um, and we're going to do this in breakout rooms uh, with just small numbers of people. Um, we would like to do, I think we've got enough people to do three breakout rooms. Uh, so I'm curious if anybody else has any experience with Miro. Um, that could be one of the mappers for, uh, for one of the breakout rooms. Does anybody have any experience using this tool before? You can just put your hand up if you have. All right, Liza. I haven't used Miro, but I've used lots of others. Okay, um, cool. Aaron, Liza, perfect. So we'll make sure to put you guys into um, breakout rooms um, with some folks. And we'll have 20 minutes just to make whatever it is you want. Get creative, ask each other questions. Why do we think we need this piece? What else are we missing? How do we conceptualize this? And we're going to co-create some sense of vision. And we'll come back and we'll talk about it. Yeah, so Eileen, if Does you want to have any questions, those. do you want me to make the breakout rooms? Yeah. Okay. Um, and into the chat, I will post the link to the Miro. Uh, if the one mapper, or you can have multiple people mapping live at the same time, um, you'll pick one of the uh, sandboxes or sand locations to go to. And um, you can also share your screen. So not everybody has to be in doing the actual mapping. The other people can also just be verbally contributing. But if everyone wants to play in the sandbox, you're welcome to do that too. Is, are there like different spaces for each room or we, I just have to open the mirror and see this, or are we just all co-creating on the same like canvas? Yeah, there's different spaces for each room. Okay. So you can see I've got four here. But I think with the, these numbers, we'll just do three rooms. 
so you can stake your claim when you're in a room. And is our prompt just to play around with a learning environment, whatever that means? Yeah, I mean, you can talk about global global economic, global learning systems. You can talk about it, what it, like a single village learning, whatever it is you want to do. We've had people use real examples. Like, I'm kind of working on this thing. I don't know how it could work. Let's see if we can diagram it. And other people just imagined an ecology. Cool, sorry, I'm almost, the rooms are almost ready. Any other questions before we, should I hit go? We've got some thumbs up, I think we're ready. <laughs> okay, then let's do it. Hello. Welcome back. Um, very curious to hear how it all went. We got to some, we definitely felt like we could have used more time, I think is, is one thing, <laughs> which is always true. I wish the session had been longer because um, an hour is quite a short amount of time to do the things. 
Um, but yeah, let's use the rest of our time to first just look at each other's boards um, and maybe we can hear a short um, scenario or synopsis of what was happening. We'll go first, I guess, because we're here. <laughs> Does someone from our room want to speak to the map that we made? Well, if it's kind of tiny, we made ours bigger at the end. Liza, do you want to say anything? Well, this, this was kind of, we talked about the fact that we're doing two things at once. We're, we're learning the tool and we're actually trying to explore a concept. So um, what I felt like happened was we threw out a whole bunch of ideas and we put them in circles. And then we started trying to figure out how the, the different circled elements related to each other. So we have uh, deep learning versus shallow learning. We talked about that. And I, I threw in the, the versus as a way of uh, relating these two. We explored arrows, so we talked about different kinds of learning and um, talked about conscious learning and unconscious learning and, and added that that's connected through reflection. And then um, Eileen did this section over here um, and um, it's still so small, I can't see it on my screen. So, so we talked a little bit about um, the, the collaboration function and how we, how, when we're trying to do something together, uh, we need to make sure we're all um, on the, in the same box, if not on the same page. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we came to the prompt that, like, um, what does it look like? What is learning? But what is learning to reimagine education? And that's kind of where this began being pulled in, right? Like how, what are the things that we need to be able to do so that we are prepared to reimagine education? Um, so, uh, yeah, and of course there's arrows going lots of different directions because it's a very nonlinear process. Um, yeah, but no, thanks for summarizing. Eleanor, do you want to add anything? I know she's also tending to children. All right, I found this map next. So let's hang out with this one. Who wants to take us through it a bit? Hi, this is Rebecca and Marie, and we were with Diyun and uh, Joshua. Joshua. And well, what to say? Uh, we we kind of shared about all of our journeys and spaces we had that made us kind of come alive and engage with learning and then spaces that perhaps were stifling or challenging to learning or just didn't feel like they were as conducive conducive as they could be um and we all had some kind of overlap as well as unique qualities so i think in dreaming up an ideal space it was a space that could be multi dimensional and functional to hold many different styles and personalities and learning learning styles. Um, what do we, what were some themes? I think of, um, and please feel free to, yeah, anybody else pop in, but we talked about really the a collaborative space it could be multi-generational. Um, and even the role of circles with learning rather than kind of top down, but something that was um, both a circle that's spacious and being able to hold people who want to go deep into a subject or people who want to talk and learn that way or people who want to learn through play. So all of these different divergent ways of learning being spacious enough for that and open ended enough, um, but also collaborative and accommodating and playful. I think we're general themes. I, I think that we're kind of 
perhaps across the board. I don't know. I don't know if that's true, or I'm not sure if anybody wants to pop in with some other thoughts or perspectives. I have a question. Yeah. As you were building the map, uh, did you did it? Did you think about the possibility of having the 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 sort of rectangular things overlap when the concepts overlapped? So, I honestly was just writing down what we were talking about. There is no shape or structure to uh, most of this. Okay. I think. Maybe one thing you said in, in us chatting um, was that actually the spaciousness and not having it um, mm. formed, there was actually almost an intention perhaps in having it open-ended and not- um, Within a box. Not within a box, not within a certain structure, but- There. Potentially <laughs> spacious <laughs> in a way. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it kind of captures the organic nature of like, yeah learning I, that isn't explicitly designed or overly structured yes i think that came from your your sandbox is there was like learning just happens um so that feels feels accurate um in all in all spaces in a way mm -hmm. yeah yeah no i love all these different elements that are coming together and like even this as a basis for a learning project could like lead to some beautiful um, visioning and designing. So thanks for creating that. Um, okay, let's go find. Oh, wow, check out this map. Got images and icons. Okay, who's gonna tell me where to start or if someone else wants to share their screen. Okay, I can start because uh, I started the map and then I'll pass it on. And um, so the image that came to me was um, uh, something that I kind of took out of the session with Fordista Collective this morning of like putting our heads down under the ground and like being in the soil and like what would learning as a worm, you know, be in like the mm -hmm. sensorial, sensorial experience of the dirt and then um, the, all the little animals and then the mycelium came up. So this connective tissue, um, and this idea of like direct experience, like what's happening, for instance, like right now, I just see a spider that's, that's crawling along my wall. So like, I'm thinking, um, uh, I associate that with wisdom and like, how can we really be in the direct experience rather than in concepts um, and labels and words and um, yeah, taking with me a lot from also the panel this morning with Jinan. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so that was, it's interesting. That's where we started. And then I feel like we just kind of let it go. So I'm going to pass it off to my, um, my compas that were in the room with me to say where we went from there. Because this is like lots of metaphor is what I'll say. Amazing. Um, yeah, I can jump off from there, Aaron. Um, I really enjoyed, I think a lot of what we spent our time on was exploring the like different metaphors that kind of popped out of this starting point. Um, so one of them was how like the dirt is made of old, you know, like the old dead trees and plants and like those plants represent the older, maybe other modes of education or systems of learning that have needed to die and have died. And through that, like allowing other plants to thrive and, you know, there's letting in when a big tree falls down, it lets in the sunlight, like how a big, when a big system changes, then, um, new systems can thrive and, and same thing underground all of that dirt is the decomposed matter from other projects and other systems of learning um and we also talked a lot about monocultures and how perhaps um i think narayan brought up how pine trees acidify the ground all around them so like basically no other plant can grow and how in a lot of ways our standardized education has done that with like a monoculture of education. And we explored the ways that monocultures are 
fragile, susceptible to disruption, and not resilient. And so perhaps we need more diversity <laughs> in our education. Hmm. Yeah, are two monocultures better than one? And I also like this question of like, what trees are blocking the light? Um, yeah, no, there's energy. <laughs> I love how energetic this map is and um, how much richness there is here. And Where did you find the pictures? Oh, some of them were in the little corner, like they had put some icons, but you can also search for them. You can also like go over and to the upload, um, uh, the little arrows and then go icon finder and then you can like search for stuff in your own. Yeah, I was using yeah. sticker stickies and emojis as well. Yeah. And they show up differently on my screen. They show up with like this weird hyperrealism in Eileen's screen and mine just look like <laughs> cartoons. So looking at your screen, Eileen, is like a totally different experience for me. Like, oh, this is serious. <laughs> <laughs> you guys did get serious. I like it. It was fun. <laughs> yeah. Uh, beautiful. Well, I, we only have a few minutes left. Does anyone want to share any reflections on the process, on any of these maps? What stands out to you? Was this I think next spell? time it would be fun just for all the toys or just a huge pile of emojis. <laughs> no text the drawing was super fun actually yeah and text to describe it and stuff mm -hmm. i'm still thinking about the like monoculture thing and the like variety of just our three sandboxes makes me very happy especially like as a teacher i'm very used to grading like a hundred kids work that all looks kind of identical and activities where you really get to be your own creative self are so much, so much more fun. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm always struck by like, when we have, when we're forced into like using visual, leaning more towards visual, what, what comes out and do you guys find it richer, harder, more distracting, more useful? I mean, this is like how I learn, you know, so I feel like it's super fun. And I, but I also know that I, you know, have some familiarity with the technology. So for me, it was just like, I'm just going to start like scribbling all over this thing, <laughs> but it really, it just like brings a lot more life to the experience for me. Mm. I think it plays a similar role to metaphor, um, which is you can you can share a metaphor quite simply and it puts everybody on the same page like very instantly. Um, so in a group with a lot of diversity, I find it a metaphor or a visual medium can can really help to do that integration. Inclusion. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Jiyun, do you want to? Uh, vocalize anything in this space? Um, yeah, I I absolutely uh, love what's come out of all of this uh, dialogue and imagining, um, uh, especially the metaphor, <laughs> the the metaphor of uh, we are the land basically, and the land is us, and how we treat the land, and some metaphor for how we treat ourselves all of that and their educational systems are very representative of this, this thing yeah hmm yeah how usually one person is how you're treating everyone one thing one aspect beautiful well thanks everyone for your openness and willingness to to show up and to play and to co-create and see what emerges um We'll leave this board here for a little bit. So if you want to poke around, you can even look at the other maps that we made yesterday in more detail. Um, and yeah, if you scroll to the left, you'll see even more diversity of maps. <laughs> yeah, we kind of pointed at these a little bit at the very beginning. Um, but yeah, these were the three groups from yesterday, which had 
totally different uses of this tool. Miro is like a really widely used, I don't know, it can be used in so many different ways. Um, and different people continually demonstrate to me how to use it differently, which is kind of fun. Um, okay, well, I think there's a short break um, in terms of the schedule. And then in 15 minutes, there's another block of sessions with lots of richness and goodness happening. Um, oh, let me drop a link. I wonder how I can do that. There's like a feedback form. Thank you. Anyone wants to <laughs> Thanks, everyone. feedback um, would be cool to hear uh, maybe a little bit more about your experience. And yeah, just thanks again. Be in touch if you'd like. Thank you. Mm -hmm. yeah, thank you. That was fun. <laughs> Great. Glad to hear it. Yeah, fun was one of our <laughs> main hopes for this session. <laughs> um, I feel like Playground is the right name for these series of things that we get to do. Uh -huh. Yeah, we really hope. Ah, I had the thought That's good. that like is the reimagine could the reimagined education conference become its own ecoversity or is it already? Like it could just be we're like a we meet once a year, but it could be seen as a program of sorts. I don't know what an ecoversity is. <laughs> Weird thing to say at this conference, but yeah. <laughs> I think that's probably true for plenty of people here, <laughs> like collectively here. Mm -hmm. Well, is this ever going to be in person? I don't know about this one. There's, um, there's a global gathering happening in Egypt in a month. So oh, right. Yeah. Person there. Um, and if anyone wants to come or attend, you're invited. Uh, so, yeah, people do hang out occasionally. It's been a while. It's been like two and a half years since there's been anything official uh, that's been broadly. There's been regional gatherings. Um, yeah. But I think this is kind of nice that it's virtual because it means folks from all over the world come. <clears throat> and there's like less barriers to entry. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Well, thanks so much.